Okay, welcome back to part two, where we're discussing if statements. So, last part, we discussed the basic functionality, um, and now we're going to be expanding on that a little bit more. Because um, it may be the case that after you've checked something, like if x is greater than 5, let me just edit it so that it actually says that, so x is greater than 5. Um, instead of that, you might want to do something else, like um, print x is 5 or lower. Now, how do we make it so um, that this is done instead of what's in the if statement? Well, we could, of course, just add another if statement. So if x is smaller or equal to 5, then end it. So this would work, um, but you need two if statements, and that looks kind of silly, you know, because you're always going, this is always going to be true if the first one is not true, and vice versa. So you can do this shorter, and there's a tool for that, known as else. So what this does is it checks the first if statement. If it's true, it will execute the code within the if, until the else, and then it'll skip whatever's in the else, because it's already done the if. Um, if whatever's in the if statement is false, it will skip the code in the if statement, and it will execute the code in the else instead. So it will do either one of the two, always, but depending on whether the if statement is true or not. If the if statement is true, it'll do the first part. If not, it will always do the second part, um, in all cases. Now, it may be the case that um, you do want to check something in the if, though, in the in the else, I mean. So, you, you may want to be checking, you know, x is greater than 5, but I also want x to be smaller than 20, for some reason, where well, you can do that. You can use else if x is smaller than 20. So now, let's say x is greater than 5. That's true. So it will execute... Um, that first part of code in the first if, but then it will skip the else if, it won't even check it, it's like, okay, I'm done. Now if um, this is false, let's say the first if is false, it will skip the first part, but it will check the else if. Is x smaller than 20 though? And let's say that that's true, x is uh, 4 or something, and then it will uh, execute the code in the else if instead. It's also possible though that um, both of these are false. I don't even think that's possible right now because <laughs> they kind of overlap, but um, no worries. They could uh, also both be false if I hadn't picked up this due thing. Let's make it greater than 20 now. Um, in which case, you could still put an else after this, which would always be executed. Now, as you may be able to see, um, if x is greater than 5, that will be executed. If x is greater than 20, um, it could be both. It could be like 25, in which case this first part of the if is going to be executed and then nothing. So right now, this second if, or the, the first else if, is completely useless, because if it's greater than 5, uh, actually it doesn't necessarily have to be greater than 20, but if it's greater than 20, it's always going to be greater than 5, so... Basically, um, the part where it's checking if it's greater than 20 is never going to be executed in this case, but yeah, just as an example. So you have if, you have else if, if you want to check um, a secondary thing, and you have else to do whatever you want to do if everything else has been false up until now. Um, so that's the only expansion on the if statements I had, I believe. Um, I explained the and and the or in the previous part. I must explain the difference between the else if and just adding another if statement then. Um, so we have an else if now. Now what this means is that either the top one or the second one is going to be executed. Never both. They can never both be executed. If it does the first one, it will skip the second one. 
if it skips the first one, it could do the second one, maybe not. Um, they could also both not be executed. Now, if you don't do the else, let's say you just have if, and you'd ended the first if statement here, they could also both be executed, which would not be possible um, if this was an else if, if the second one was an else if. And that's the, the main difference. So I think that'll do for now. Um, as you can see, um, if you use an if, you have to end it with end, which means that everything between the if and the end will be executed if the if statement turns out to be true. Um, if you use an else if, you don't need to use the end. It's kind of included in the else. Um, save. Same for if you just go simply else, you don't need an end either. Though you do need to end the else itself. Um, I guess I should show you that this works as well. Um, so let's say we make x6. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to make this um, smaller than 5. Alright. So we'll start with x is 1. So it's checking. Is x smaller than 5? Then print <laughs> something that's not really right. x is... Okay. Smaller than 5. x is... Uh, is higher than 20. X is between 5 and 20. There we go. Alright, let's try that. So X is 1 now, so it should tell me that X is smaller than 5. Unfinished string. I believe you not. See, that's the annoying thing. Compilers are always right. Um, try that again. Still, I'm not very good today, am I? Uh, else, if then else. Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. There's a chance that maybe you don't need to use the then on the else if, but I find that hard to believe. Oh, wait, you do need the then. I didn't start a string here. Okay. Simple mistakes. Always good and fun. There we go. X is smaller than 5 with a typo. That's fine. Because X was 1. Let's make X 25. X is higher than 20. And now let's make X... 10 X is between 5 and 20. Okay, good. So that's working. So there's your basic uh, if statement set up and this will help you determine which code you're running during your program depending on what the value of your variables are. And You may make more decisions depending on what if statements were triggered and so on. Getting very complex and complex and complex. So thanks for watching. Next tutorial we'll be going into the third building block uh, of your programming language, which is loops, for loops and while loops. I hope you're looking forward to that, and thanks for watching. See you then.